Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing August beauty favorites and I wanted to film this a little bit differently than I typically do. Usually when I film monthly favorites I do a get ready with me but I was just missing the conversational sit down just talk with you and talk about you know the products and the things that I'm loving. So I will still be inserting demo clips so you can see what the products look like as I'm applying them. But I just wanted it to be a little bit more chill, more conversational, we just talk, hang out about these products. So um, I'm gonna start off by saying I changed my hair color for the first time in like six months. I used the Madison Reed box colors. Um, I was actually really interested in those, but I never got them because it's always online. And so I was always a little bit weary, skeptical, if you will. But my local Ulta started selling them. And so I mixed two colors. I did uh, 4NG and then 5NG. I'll insert the picture of the actual boxes. And I feel like this is so exciting. We finally hit that exact color match where I feel like it matches my roots perfectly because up here I did not color it so like all that is my natural hair color and then like about here is where the color is so I only colored like where I saw the line of demarcation from the previous color and I'm so excited to finally find like the right match so I can keep coloring the bleached ends of my hair because they really do start um, changing color when the color starts fading so it's just like you know it's easier for me if I can just grow out my natural hair color that's been my goal ever since I stopped bleaching was to not have to keep coloring the roots and even when I go out into the sunlight you don't see like a weird line it all just matches and I'm really really happy with the way it turned out I think it looks really nice healthy and shiny and when this fades I'll definitely continue to color the bleached areas with that Madison Reed color. Unless I, you know, I can't say that because, you know, I might find something and change my hair color, but I could see it being my hair color for the next couple months. Sunscreen, I'm loving it. This one is from Eve Lom. It's the Daily Protection SPF 50. Now, I know that this is a really high price point. It's very bougie, but I am one of those people who kind of hates sunscreen. I hate having to test them out. When I find one that I really like, I tend to stick with it, but I still enjoy trying other formulas because I always feel like there's something better. A lot of times sunscreens break me out or they leave me with a really noticeable white cast. This one is a chemical sunscreen. It does not break me out. It does not irritate my skin, my eyes. I don't get eczema from it. The first time I applied it though, uh, not gonna lie, it went on white and I was a little bit shocked because I wasn't anticipating that. But once you blend it in and it sets on your skin, it's completely clear. And honestly, like such a good switch up if you aren't somebody who likes using primers. I feel like this honestly leaves you with such a nice, silky smooth, a little bit of a dewy base, but it just looks so beautiful. It does not pill under makeup and it does not, you know, make your face greasier throughout the day. So I am truly so excited about this. I just like it so much. I loved this little lip balm from Naturium. It's the Phyto Glow Lip Balm in the shade Camellia. So you can wear this as a lip color on its own, but this stuff is so moisturizing. You know I like to put lip balm on before I do my makeup just so that it has the whole entire time to really sink in and then by the time I get to lip color, my lips have like fully absorbed that lip balm and they just feel really nice and prepped for lipstick. And it's just a nice routine to have, especially if you're somebody who tends to wear matte lipsticks try that out but um i really really like this it's so moisturizing this month i feel like my skin is actually in a pretty good place i've not had quite as many active breakouts i feel like some of my hyperpigmentation has finally started to fade and my skin tone's just looking a little bit more even so on days where i really didn't want to wear makeup i would just spot conceal around the face or if I wanted more coverage like today and I want like a little bit more of a soft glam look, I was doing skin tints. So it's hard for me to choose between which one I was wearing more because I really did bounce back and forth between the two of these. Huda Glowish, 
obsessed. There is something different about this skin tint. I don't have anything else like it in my collection. I've mentioned that before. It is very moisturizing and almost kind of feels like a balm as you're blending it in. You can wear this sheared out. It has customizable coverage so you can really build it up if you want, but it already has a built-in luminizer so your skin just looks very dewy and radiant and I think it looks the best just like sheared out for a little bit of coverage and to help even out the skin tone. And then the other one is the L'Oreal True Match Nude. Still so obsessed with this one. This one has a pearl to it as well. But when the actual like formula sets down on my skin type, this looks like more of a satin finish with a little bit of luminizer to it. So it's not quite as dewy as the Huda. But again, you get the best of both worlds because you can wear this sheared out on the skin for just a little bit of even tone and some blurring on imperfections or you can really build it up and get some really great coverage. So I don't think you can go wrong with either of these. This one's gonna be more, you know, satin, little bit more of a powder finish, whereas Glowish is definitely much more dewy. And um, I just, I love that look. Like the Glowish one is gonna make your skin look really beautiful and bouncy. We are loving a lighter formula concealer right now. It is hot, it is sweaty, my face sweats, I don't like feeling sticky. So I love this one from Nude Sticks. It's got a little bit more of a gel-like formula and it really does blend out and feel super lightweight. I can still use this to cover up blemishes. I have like an active nose zit right now that has been on my nose for weeks. It goes away and then when it's starting to go away, I've done it two or three times. I try to like pick at it to get the rest of the stuff out of it and then it comes back to a head so that's i need to just leave it alone but it it really will not go away but that's my point it covers pimples really well too and i just like how lightweight this is and even on days like i said where i don't want to even wear a skin tint i'll just wear this on its own or some of um like a matte concealer if that's what I'm going for. But honestly, even on days where I don't want to wear foundation, I just wanna wear a little bit of concealer, I could go in with this or another one. But the thing that I've really been liking about this one is even when I do put it on top of a foundation or skin tints, it still feels lightweight and doesn't feel like another gloopy, gloppy layer of concealer when it's really hot out. I know we don't love powder on a daily basis. We love to look dewy and youthful, but when it is this hot, you need to set with powder, even I do. Because <laughs> sometimes I feel like it just, it helps keep things in place. It helps things from shifting and migrating and settling into different places on your face. And day in and day out, I've been reaching for the Laura Mercier Translucent Honey Powder. Now, the amazing thing about this is it's the same formula as the original Laura Mercier Translucent Powder but it's got this gorgeous honey undertone to it. So if you have you know, yellow undertones to your skin or even you're just more of a medium to deep skin tone, this is gonna be a lot more colored skin friendly because it doesn't leave you with any white cast or any ashiness because it's just gonna put like a little bit more of a yellow toned brightness on the skin. Although I will say you barely even see that and it really does just you know smooth everything out and set the makeup in place without making you look dried out and chalky my favorite way to apply it is with a damp sponge i feel like that's how i really get the best results you can use a brush but try it with a damp sponge i think you'll like it a little bit more it's almost like it makes the powder go a little bit further and it just applies a lot more smooth to the skin two bronzer products i'm literally loving so scott's Soft Sculpt Bronze from By Mario. This is what I've been using to contour with. It's quite similar to Benefit Hula, but slightly lighter. And it's also got just the tiniest bit of shimmer to it, so it's not easy to go overboard with. And it kind of makes contouring a little bit more foolproof, um, especially if I don't have a tan from the sun or I don't have any spray tan on. I do like something a little bit lighter, and this fits the bill. It blends out beautiful, and I just, I love the Mario powders. I think they're so finely milled and gorgeous and the bronzer that we have got to talk about it's not even a bronzer it's the luminous silk setting powder from Giorgio Armani I just purchased it in the shade 11.5 which is for a deeper skin tone to set with I cannot tell you how much I love this and how I wish that I had tried this sooner and I said this in a previous video I really do want to get the shade for my skin to try setting with but I mean, even in the pan, you can see it reflects back light. It's gorgeous. It feels like a cream, 
but it's a powder. It's so emollient. This tone has the most gorgeous red undertone to it. So it really looks like you've been kissed by the sun. And that gorgeous like little bit of luminosity that you get that just reflects the light in all the right ways. I can't get enough of it. Um, I really like just putting it all over my entire face and I like actually taking it on a little uh, angled brush and kind of contouring my nose with it. And I feel like it just gives you that really cute um, been in the sun, you know, sun kissed nose and it just replicates that so well. I just, I am so head over heels for this powder. This highlight did not disappoint. I purchased it pretty recently, but have been reaching for it when I want that like soft, really, gorgeous candlelit glow this is the tom ford moonlight i'm sorry mood light in shade number one so you get two different shades you have more of a rose gold shade and then this one's like a white gold i don't wear them exclusively i mix them together um i don't i guess i haven't even tried wearing them just as a single shade i love the way they look when they're mixed together i just think it looks so beautiful and i really like the way it just softly catches the light on the high points of the face. So I'll put it on the tops of my cheekbones, above my brow, my nose, Cupid's bow, and it really just gives you that soft candlelit glow. I can't emphasize it enough. It just, you look like the light is catching you in all the right places. It's end of August, it's about to be September. We are breaking out those berry tones. I am so excited. We are berry girls for the fall. You cannot deny that a berry toned blush and a berry lip it hits different in the fall. It just looks so good. And I am loving Charlotte Tilbury's Walk of No Shame blush. I am such a big fan of her blushes in general, the cheek to chic blushes, because around the core of the products, you have the shade and then in the middle you have an illuminator. So if you wanna make the blush a little bit more glowy, reach for a little bit more of the illuminator. If you want it to be more concentrated on the color, you can just swipe your blush, uh, your brush, your blush brush around the edge of the product and you'll get more of a concentrated color because the shade itself is quite luminous. But this is seriously the most beautiful berry blush with a gold shimmer to it. Does that not sound intoxicating for the fall months? I mean, I, get so excited for this time of year because of the berry blushes. Yes, you can wear berry blush all year round. I'm not saying it's exclusive to fall, but just like berry blush in the fall, it just gets me in the mood. I love it so much. And this is such a beautiful shade. I was actually um, inspired because my friend Megan started using this and I was like, that looks so good. You also know I like to hit you with those brunette perfect shades. And we're gonna talk about our shadow. This is our shadow it makes brown hair brown eyes it just makes your eyes twinkle it is really unique because it's a rosy bronze so it's got a good amount of like a reddish pink undertone to it but it still you know catches the eye as like a copper brown but against the brown eyes i just think it like really makes them twinkle and look really beautiful. So it's called Forbidden Rose. It's the Caviar Eye Stick from Laura Mercier. And you can use this even as an eyeliner if you'd like, but what I like to do is just apply it to my eyelid, blend it out with a fluffy brush, and then I'll even take it on the lower lash line. Brunette, brown eyes, this is our shade, and it's gonna be so great for fall. These are also so beautiful. They are long wearing. You don't have to wear them on their own. You can also use them as a shadow base, so you can put powder shadow on top if you'd like, but they last throughout hours and hours on the eyes. And um, for my eyeliner, just like all I did was for my look was I put a little bit of brown eyeliner on. This is the Planet Revolution Dark Brown Eyeliner. I just put that along my lash line, smudged it out, and then applied this right on top. And I really buffed it like a little bit into the crease as well. And you've got a look and your eyes, they pop. This is a new product to me. It's the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim 1.5 millimeter defining pencil. So tiny, you know, I'm just like really craving these super, super tiny pencils right now because I really want my brows to look more full but I don't like when I use pencils that are too thick that they just get cartoony. I really want to be able to draw all those hair-like strokes in and I got mine in the shade black because I feel like my hair is, you know, really dark so I'm not reaching for brunette brow pencils as much anymore. I like this. 
It's way more affordable than the one from Refi, Refi, Refi. It's a lot more affordable than that one. Still love the one from Refi, but it's gonna, I'm just, I use brow pencil so much because I really like that like full fluffy brow look, which leads me to my next product I wanna talk about really quick. I've been using Rogaine on my eyebrows for about a month now, I wanna say. I'm not noticing any difference. I just put it on my eyebrows in the morning and then I put them on my eyebrows at night. I saw that uh, Charlotte Palermino, who I love, um, on her Into the Gloss episode, or not episode, her article, she talked about using Rogaine in her brows and how it keeps them looking really full and fluffy. So I wanted to try. This is probably gonna last me like over a year because I use like a dime sized amount, put it on a Q-tip, run it through my brows. I do plan on doing a before and after so we can actually see if it works but yeah that's like my brow move right now and then obviously still setting with the Anastasia brow freeze wax I feel like even when you just see it on one brow compared to the other it genuinely like lifts up your face because this brow gel is so industrial strength and you can really truly control the shape of your brows and it's pretty wild to me how much like more open one side of my face will look when I only set one side compared to the other one because you can just really lift up that whole entire area and your brow looks like you've gotten a little bit of a lift like don't people do botox to get like brow lifts because i feel like you can get that effect with this <laughs> in terms of lashes i started using the grande lash md again do you remember when my lashes were so long they looked like falsies i was watching some of my old videos and my lashes were like super long when i was consistently using this i'm convinced that my lashes were longer when i was using this versus latisse but i don't know <laughs> like, i'm gonna use this for a few months see where we're at we'll see if it's actually in my head or if latisse was actually making my lashes longer i don't really know but we are using grande m lash again because it really does make your eyelashes look like falsies. I put it on my top lashes and my bottom lashes. I feel like my lashes are getting noticeably longer again, but I have this mascara primer that is really changing the game for me. I've talked about it for years. It's the Lancome Sills Booster. It's this little white lash primer. This primer layers on top of itself so well because you can really just focus it right on the tips of your lashes and almost wait for it to dry a little bit in between each coat and then keep layering it on top of itself and you can actually see your lashes lengthen when you're applying the primer and then when you go in with your mascara whatever mascara it is it can be a drugstore mascara like the Maybelline Lash Stiletto it just makes such an impactful difference that when I don't use this I feel like why wouldn't I because I can use a cheaper mascara and I get so much more result from the mascara by using the primer. You can even put it on your lower lashes if you want, but if you are truly craving extra length and you feel like your mascara is really not giving it to you, try this. I promise you it is amazing. That's why I always recommend it every once in a while because it's that good. This is about to be one of the most random references I've ever made. But I was so inspired by Jennifer Cooling's makeup in White Lotus. I think whoever did her looks for that show, incredible. I was so inspired by how it was kind of like a modern 90s makeup look and the hair was so good. She just looked so phenomenal the whole season. But it was her lip colors. Like her lip colors were so perfect. They were like the right pinky nudes and I have just been searching for those types of shades because I loved the way her lips looked in the whole show and the perfect lip liner I think to really get that look and I've really been loving it and wearing it today is Wherever Walnut from Makeup Forever. The only gripe I have with this pencil is that it's not long wearing but it really is one of those shades that you can perfectly overline your lips with and it still looks natural because it is a very accurate shade of you know the line that would naturally be around your lip so i like that you can overline with this and really still get that like ultra pouty look and then this is the shade that i feel like is super accurate to the color that she wore most of the time in the show and i used up the entire tip like i was wearing this almost every single day because i loved it so much this is from pyt and it's in the shade bear all so on one side you have the lipstick which is like the perfect 
muted pinky nude and then on the other side you have the gloss which is a little bit more pink i think when you put it on i like it just with the lipstick on the pyt is actually available at target now this was one of my like favorite brands and i think they were only online so when i saw them in target i stocked up so bear all definitely my most favorite this month and then the other one from pyt is what i'm wearing on my lips today it's the lip gloss in the shade do me do me what spirited is it spirited or do me and it's D-E-W, do me. I think it might be in the shade Spirited, but it's a really, really gorgeous, glossy mauve nude. I have a brush hair in my nose or something. Why does this always happen to me when I'm filming? And then this is the, or, <laughs> why did my voice give out? This is the Charlotte Tilbury Nude Romance Lipstick. So beautiful. I'm just so infatuated with Charlotte Tilbury lip colors. I always really am gravitated towards them and I just feel like they always look so good. They never disappoint. Like I'm just obsessed and this nude is beautiful. I think I need to do an updated favorite nude lipsticks video because this has quickly become one of my new favorite nudes. And then this one is pretty. This is going to be so nice for the fall. I've already been wearing it out a couple times. It's the Namaste lipstick from Well People. It's got kind of like a chili red terracotta clay undertone to it but it still pulls quite brown to where it just looks like a deeper nude and it is beautiful creamy lush i love the well people optimist lipsticks the formula is so gorgeous all right my friends that is it for august favorites let me know if you like the way that this was filmed i feel like it's a little bit more fun because we can you know talk and i can insert demo clips and then you can still get to see what the products look like. It's not just a, you know, get ready with me style video. So would love to know your thoughts and would love it so much if you would subscribe and if you'd come follow me on Instagram, that would also be amazing as well. And I'll see you in my next video. So thank you so much for watching this one. Bye everyone.